This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. Kicksville. <laughs> The Rivers, the Grasshoppers, the Hitler, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a country. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Two socks last on the way. The word is going to go 50 slang. And yes, we'll drink it toast. The shot of the day is coming up. Ted, you're warning about the logistics. Uh, about having sex. It's got to be the exhaust pipe, right? Right. That's the only way I've ever seen it. I mean, I've never seen it. I'm just guessing... That's what you do. I've just seen a clip of a guy going to town on a ga- on a tailpipe. All right, and then it's like he turns around and the camera catches him. And then he's like, "Oh, and like, oh, he didn't know he was on the camera." Hey. But it's like the middle of the day. It's like, how did you think nobody had noticed you're having sex with the tailpipe? I, if you have to have sex with the car, what car are you going to pick? They're like, "Look, you have to have sex with the car," but the car, absolutely, your pick. Ah, uh, how about a Corvette? The car you're going to bag, like a 76 Corvette man, yeah. stick. you know what? Ideally, it'd be Kit. Because at least there's conversation. Mm-hmm. This feels great, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't shock me to find out Blank was in the blank. 844-999-OLA. Hello, Dylan. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, guys. So, uh, I'm a Navy guy, and uh, Uh-oh. a caller you had to go was a fellow up here in Everett, uh, I also work on the destroyer, so I got a funny one for you. Destroyer uh, living. I thought you were just yep. to say I know nugget poor oh. guy. Yeah. <laughs> this will probably top that. So. Oh, good. So we were on. Uh, you guys heard of rim pack, right? No. no. So it's like a giant exercise they do out in Hawaii for with a bunch of other countries, basically a war game thing. Okay. All right. Well, we're we're underway for God knows how long, and. We had uh, we had these people on board, and someone had snuck an airplane bottle, threw it away in the trash. You're not supposed to have alcohol in a Navy boat. Of course. Well, someone got the uh, the master at arms, which is our sheriff, more or less, and that led to a giant health and comfort inspection. Health and comfort. Well, okay. So, well, it's a fancy term for saying, "Hey, we're going to search your." rack that has all your belongings in and make sure you don't have any contraband or things that are not allowed on a Navy boat. Well, they take us all out to the flight deck and we're waiting. They're calling out certain berthings to inspect with chiefs and officers and whatnot. Well, after it was all said and done, we had this electrician who was a uh, nuke washout and I'll, he always got so mad whenever we called him this, but he had made a homemade masturbation device from two large yellow sponges with a blue nitro glove sandwiched together. <laughs> we did not expect to find this in a rack. <laughs> yeah, I bet not. <laughs> and, and what's the explanation you give? I mean, like, when you get busted with this, like, how do you respond when someone says, hey, man, what is this for? Now, if it was one-on-one, say, your supervisor would be like, look, dude, seriously, come on. You should know better than this. Was it thrown overboard? Uh, That I don't know, but all I know is that he was just so embarrassed that he was red in the face for the rest of the day, and we would not let him live down the name SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Oh, yeah, there it is. (laughs) Did you get to see what this apparatus looked like? No, I did not, but I had some very descriptive uh, explanations of it from Dude. guys that were in that birthing. I mean, it sounds like it must be awesome. <laughs> Obviously, it worked for the guy. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, if, if it matters that much to you to come up with a device, and you like the device, right? homemade style. and Yeah, I've just never needed it, man. You know what I mean? Solo time's always been very easy. Mm-hmm. It's one thing I appreciate about it. There's no whiskey D. You don't psych yourself. It's like, man, you do just fine. Yeah, but you're those guys are in the military. They haven't seen anybody in a long time. I know. Like and they're younger. Right? So like I probably wouldn't make a homemade device now. <laughs> but you're not putting it past yourself twenty years. No, years. eighteen, nineteen year old Ted? Spot out square Ted. I sure. don't care. <laughs> it didn't shock me to find out blank was into blank. Eight four four nine 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 Ola. Hello, Rebus. Welcome to the men's room. Hey guys, uh, so I was not surprised to find out that my uh, five-year-old son was into motorboating large-breasted women. Your five-year-old son does this? 
Well, he's eight now, but we figured it out fairly early on. So when, when he was in preschool, when he was three years old, one of the moms um, said, hey, Ronan, and, and honked him on the nose. And he said, hey, Ronan, and honked her on the boot. Uh huh. Now- like this his entire life. And it's, I think it's mostly because he genetically inherited it from me. And then also uh, because my wife is an eye cup. And so it's. Just, an so eye cup? cup? Damn. Uh, well, a double eye cup, actually, yeah. So wow. I'm guessing your kid was never hungry growing up. Good God. What's man. the battery life on that like? Does it uh, dwindle over time, like the iPhone, or does it stay where it is? Oh, no. It's fantastic. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's fantastic. Was that, was that the reason you're married to your wife? Was that the first attraction? Was, was that how you met? Uh, when we met, she said I was the first guy she had ever... Um, gone on a date with that didn't immediately stare at a test. I looked her in the eyes, and that was actually surprising for her. And so, did you explain funny. to her that that was part of your whole ploy, and that you were wearing uh, sunglasses? It, no, no, it was at night, but uh, it worked out for him. But, but uh, yeah, this kid, he like he's obsessed with boobs and butts, and we are so sure that most likely we're going to end up grandparents by the time he's twelve because. He, he is just out there about it. We have to, like, warn him about sexual harassment stuff. Yeah. And he's a sexual traitor. So. Does he know what he's doing? Like, little kids get away with stuff, or sometimes I'm like, man, I know you know what you did. But, like, is he aware of it? Absolutely no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like he's a reincarnated dirty old man. And, you know, and he's... <laughs> so, but, yeah, every chance he gets. And, and my wife has had to stop him from trying to do it to her in, like, you know, a mall... And uh, he'll grow out of that once he realizes his mom's boobs in his hand, because I can't think of anything mm-hmm. less exciting than that. Ooh. Yeah, he'll uh, realize I that. mean, yeah, the moment that it hits him, trust me, that his world will change. Didn't shock me to find out Blank was into Blank, 844-999-OLA. Hello, Kimberly. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, um... Neighbor um, moved in shortly after somebody was kicked out, and she comes over and introduces herself. And it was the first time we ever had a neighbor nice and come over and introduce themselves. And um, she was super, super sweetheart. Like, long story short, um, she got drunk one night and came over to my house and like spilled the beans on everything her and her husband had done because they were having issues. And I guess on Halloween last year, they decided to um, experiment and have a foursome. Were you part of this foursome? Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, no. In costume, I guess? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I was at a party, so I'm sure. <laughs> and did this affect your relationship in a positive way or a negative way? Um, I don't think either. I mean, I just never thought that this type of a person... With, like, this kind of attitude, bubbly, fun, like, would be into this. Like, I guess they're swingers now. Oh, so they're still together? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. And they're young. Very young. Are they an attractive couple? Oh, yeah. She's very, very, very pretty, and he's good looking, too. Huh. I mean, I got to admit, most of the swingers I know are super bubbly and nice yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's a very social kind of thing. <laughs> if they were to yeah, invite... I would have never guessed. Well, if they were to invite you into one of their foursome uh, sessions... Would you turn him down? Uh, I'd have to ask my husband first. <laughs> so, well, what do you think he would say? He's going to say, "Yeah," if you're saying this chick's that hot. He's going to be like, "Yeah, absolutely, baby, whatever." Oh uh, well, he thinks she's hot too, so he probably would. Yeah, I bet you he would. Unless she says she's got to <laughs> sleep with the husband, then it'd be funny. But yeah, all right. Oh god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'd be fun. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's that strange, but I get it. You, but if you don't know, if you, you don't, don't know anybody know. in that lifestyle, right? You just have your neighbors. Just seem like average neighbors. You're not going to guess they're into well group sex. There is a yeah, generally not down the road from me. There is a couple, and hmm, I know this based on their vanity license plate, which oh. I will not tell you what the vanity license plate is. And I know they're this right based on a couple me. of it's you know like I, mean, I can't say it. I'm just it's like this. Like it's an obvious one. Oh, well, Jesus right. Christ. Exactly. Okay, I mean, right. it's right so, there, but I don't want to give away the plate on it. You know what I mean? It's, but, they make it clear what they're into. But right. when you walk by, they always talk to you, walking the dog or whatever the deal is. Like, they're very nice. And they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're older. They're very, I mean, exactly. They're bubbly. Mm-hmm. They're friendly. And I just keep thinking to myself, like, 
I know what's going on. Here. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I am very well aware the bumper sticker also helps that they have. Uh, oh, man. Right beside that basically just says, like, come on down to the to the fun part. Yeah, you know sure. I mean? We're all going to be naked. Well, a lot of that stuff, too, man, if you don't know, you would never know. No. Right? Like, you could hang out with swingers all the time. Like, there, there's certain words that might come up, but, like, Generally, honestly, like, yeah, if, if they if don't you tell don't, you. Right. How, how would you have any idea? Like, like most people, right? Like, I've known you guys forever. I don't know what the hell you do in your bedroom. Right. I don't know. I like it that way. <laughs> no, exactly. Definitely preferred that way. Hello, did, hello, Trevor. Welcome to the men's room. Hi, guys. Hola. Hola. <laughs> so, uh, back when I was in high school, about to graduate, I'd been with this girl for about a year, year and a half. And uh, she, we started getting kind of, you know, freaky because we started running out of, you know, the regular stuff. And uh, she approached me <laughs> with the uh, suggestion of, Inserting toys into the uh, tip of my penis. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no! Oh, hey, uh-uh. look at that! Uh, uh-uh. uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I, uh, I answered about the same. Okay, okay. So no experimentation there. Just a straight. It's nah. like that little green stick that you put into the hole of the lid at Starbucks. You know what I mean? Just to make sure yeah, that it doesn't <laughs> spill when you're carrying it. Yeah, that's. Uh, it seems like a bad idea, man. A bad, bad idea. <sighs> I mean. That's why I asked the first guy who called up, like, how good looking. Uh, oh, they, when his wife broke out the strap on? Yeah, because I'm telling you, man, like, they, they, real good looking. Most of the time, you're real like, oh, good looking. But I mean, it'd have to be a level like, okay, I'll try. It's so good looking. All right. Because if not, man, you're going to be like, get the frick out of here. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he surprised me with that one. I'm not yeah, going that- there at all. Flipped it on us. Mm-hmm. Well, he says sex toys. You know, like I said, the picture of a dildo, a vibrator. It's like, no, strap on. Like, oh, wow, it that's does. a game changer. Well, this has been an interesting way this uh, question has gone today. And it didn't shock me to find out blank was into blank. More interesting are the emails that are coming up next in the men's room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Frill. Our question, Men's Room, double blank style. It didn't shock me to find out that blank was into blank. And here come those emails in the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You've got me. Guys, regarding the long coat theory for crazy women, it really depends on how cold it is. I live in Michigan, where most of the time winter is 20 or below. I want my butt covered. Otherwise, I totally agree. That from Beth. Uh, Bitches, I wasn't surprised to find my brother and sister-in-law are into BDSM. My toddler nephew somehow locked their safe closed. My brother took it to a locksmith to have it open. I went with him there when he picked it up, and the guy said that it was the first uh, uh, first time he's found those items inside of a safe. I asked, what's in the safe? Brother said, 5K in two sex toys. Inside their bedroom is a wardrobe with a lock. I watched their house and found the key. Inside were other toys, rope, leather items, and a strap-on as well. Her nickname for him is the Warden. Caca, bitches. Ooh. Uh, Thanks, guys. First uh, home I bought was a nice little cul-de-sac neighborhood. We had two girls, and there were a lot of young families. The only person our dog ever bit turned out to be a child molester as an adult. Nice. Dog knows that from Bernie the Glass Man. Uh, Bitches, this happened a few years ago. guy I used to work with suddenly texted me one day. I thought I was curious because he quit the job we were at supposedly because of my fault. So, anyway, he texted me saying he wanted to go out to the club. Me being uh, tired, I tried to tell him I didn't want to go, but he kept insisting. So I finally thought, maybe I'll hook up with a girl. Hell with it, I'll go. I did tell him I didn't have any money, and he said he had me covered. For my surprise, he took us to the strip club, uh, paid for my cover, and gave me money for a lab dance. We only stayed there for like an hour when he asked if we should go get some beers. Went to a gas station across the street, bought the beers, and this dumbass decides to crack one open in the car. And start drinking. I told him not to be so stupid. We could go to the house where I was living at at the time and drink in the garage. My roommate should be asleep by then. This guy stayed three extra hours. Even though I told him I was exhausted, he said, one last beer and I'll leave. When I tried to reach for my beer, he pulled my shirt and said, but first, let me hook you up. Karaoke style. Ah. Obviously, I wasn't going to let him do that, so I started slamming his hand with a beer can to ask him uh, what was going on. Uh, yeah. Uh, everyone, uh, kind of knew that, but, uh, never actually asked him. I uh, also got him give him credit for his plan, taking me to a strip club to make me horny, then buying me beer to get me drunk. Have a great day, bitches. It doesn't quite work like that, though. No. You ever been approached through? What, by a dude? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I've been hit on, but I don't know if I've had a good aggressive one like that. I had a guy, it was, uh, <laughs> it's probably like two years ago. This guy, he was my favorite of all, because this came out of nowhere, man. It's... It is rush hour. It's after work. I light up a cigarette. I'm outside. 
He's like, excuse me, man, you got another cigarette? And I said, uh, yeah, man, I do. So I hand him one, and he, he does this eye thing where he looks me up and down. Man, I can't even repeat what he said. Kill the mic for one second just so I can repeat okay, what he said. Okay, right. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, I appreciate that's a compliment, but yeah. nah, it's good, man. Uh, guys, uh, first, sticking stuff into the end of a penis is yeah. called sounding. That's forward. Oh, yeah. Uh, second, the topic seems to go from not surprise to surprise. When I was in high school, there was a kid called George Russell, very intelligent, charming, think Ted Bundy. Uh, standing around the fire at keg parties, he would make cryptic comments like, you know when it's dark out, it's easier for you to see into a house than for residents to see out. Oh, yeah. Later in life, he became a serial killer. He's the guy who left victims in the dumpsters at restaurants. Uh, just uh, never know what folks are going to turn into. But maybe you uh, had a premonition there. How uh, do we have any uh, comments from the peanut gallery? Uh, a few. We're talking about homemade uh, masturbation devices. It says, I made a homemade self-time device from a chip can and foam rubber and condoms. It's still under the sink in our bathroom. Great. <laughs> <laughs> as far as swinging goes, and like you, you might be surprised with swings, whatever. It says my boss and his wife got offered swinger sex at a funeral, and it says, <sighs> "Whoa, gotta love how this show boosts the views and ratings for such sick ass like pterodactyl porn, also teddy bear porn." Now there's a greater demand for that. Love the show, guys. Been listening for over a decade. Wonderful. Do we have time for a few extra emails to the men's room at mensroomlive dot com? Guys, want to give a birthday shout out to my son Hayden. He's 13 today. I'm so proud of the young man he's grown up to be, and I love being his dad. Can I get a big old Leroy Jenkins and an owl hitting the window? Thanks, guys. That from Ron. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Jones, as always, love a show. Just want to say happy 14th to my son Chase. Hope you have a great day. I love you for mom. Can he get a what the F is that, bro? An andro penis and German talk about what it's like being a 14 year old boy. Grateful as usual, that from the lovely Tanya. Oh my god, what the f is that, bro? Andro penis. Yeah, being a 14 year old boy is much like being a 48 year old man. You masturbate more than you're willing to admit. <laughs> yeah, and it's a long four years to your 18. <laughs> and you will still masturbate. <laughs> Bitches, it's that time of year. It's my goddamn birthday, and no one but me to message uh, message in. Beer and bitches. P.S. Uh, see you all soon as I move from the U.K. to Vancouver. That from Stu the Brit. Give him a... Stu! Your penis Stu. is too small. Your penis is too small. Guys, birthday shout-out to my friend John, pronounced Pablo. Can I get a what the F is that, bro? And tell him what the dirty Germans do to New Yorkers, please. Oh, my God! What the f*** is that, bro? Yeah. I don't want to give too much away about the New Yorkers, but they'll nickname your ass the Queens. Yeah, this is a big apple, huh? <laughs> I'm going to show off my Empire State Building and put it right in your boogie down. Howdy, bitches. It's my friend Logan's birthday. He told me a list of things he wanted from you guys, but since I'm writing this email, I think he would like a Your penis is too small and some dirty Germans commenting about his little dingler. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, that from the Sam Smith, distant relative of the tail. Yeah, I can't help but think of Little Dingler. I think of Peter Dinklage, and I imagine your penis has a goatee. <laughs> yeah, when I think Little Dinkler, I think about a uh, small boat. You know, somebody else owns the big ones, the yacht. You just have the Dinkler. Bitches, today's my buddy Zach, pronounced Snack Packs, 30-second trip around the sun. Can you hook him up with turtle sex and your penis is too small? From his hetero life partner, JJ. <laughs> Guys, today is my friend J.D.'s birthday. Can you please have the dirty Germans tell him how metal he is and then talk all over yourselves? Thanks, guys. That from Megan. Yeah, you'll find out just how metal you can be. I have a ring. Yeah, you're so metal, you can make body parts rust. <laughs> you're in the metal, I would I'll say. I'll tell you that right now, man. Right. And you know this as well as we do. You put on the uh, white collar, man. And that's one pinky in, in uh, one pinky out. Uh, it's kind of cool. I can't hear you with the bad ears, but... Well, and it's, it's a leather strap. It's kind of like a keychain on a wall. So it goes don't from the penis to the wall. Just, just don't pull it too hard. I bet you today marks the 33rd trip around the sun. And I just want to say I've been a long-time listener. really love the show. Can I get uh, Turtle Wax with a Montgomery in the paws? And maybe some Aussie Ted. Thanks, guys. That from Adam. <laughs> Montgomery! <laughs> oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, Ted from Melbourne here. Hey, it's your birthday. Did you come on down under? Maybe I'll let you play with my tinky-winky. 
Guys, love the show. Keep doing that dirty German thing. Second, if you don't mind, please uh, wish my equally dirty boyfriend, Brian Gerard, a.k.a. Brian G., a.k.a. Niles P., a.k.a. Big G., a very happy 34th birthday. Uh, let's see here. Can I get uh, a big old bong rip and, of course, some dirty Germans? Thanks, guys. That from Sonny. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying you look like a donkey, but I want to ride that ass. <laughs> yeah, and when you're done, you can come over to my house. We'll have an appetizer, and you can cheese the hedgehog. Guys, possible get a birthday shout out. It's my 47th trip around the sun. How about a couple Joey Chestnuts? That from Brad? B Brad? Oh, the guys, I am 36. I'm a cab driver and literally get paid to listen to you guys in the traffic. I'm a uh, transgender man waiting on the twig and berry surgery. I'd love a your penis is too small and some dirty Germans. Thanks, guys. You rock that from Weston. Yeah, we do not know if you're having the twig and berries removed or applied, but either way, I will handle both. Yeah, I mean, I am in. There's a twig, there's berries. <laughs> You add all those up, it sounds like fun. Bitch is my girlfriend, Kelly, 46, amazing, and would love a fish sandwich and some dirty Germans, that from Mark. Fish sandwich? Yeah, I do not know if you will still be in my bed the next morning, but I will gladly give you some Sunny D. Yeah, you can be the bologna, and I'll be the pickle cream in the sandwich. Guys, good morning. I'm hoping you can wish my dad, Dick Richard, a happy 51st birthday. Come on. He's finally working. His name is Richard, but it's he goes by Dick. Uh, he's finally working back and uh, now has the pleasure of listening to you guys. Uh, can I get some dirty German talk? Uh, rock on, guys. Thank you. From the lovely Timberly. Yeah, I'm not really an astronaut, but I'd like to be the first man to visit Uranus. Yeah. And anytime you have sex with the German, there's a lot of exploration. <laughs> Hope it's not too late, but guys, my older brother's birthday is today. I was hoping to get a shout out to him as he is the best. Breb Dude is turning 54. If you could give him the birthday song. And also, your penis is too small. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Rock On. That from the Neth Dude. Alright, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you, bitches. Yaws of Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, shrine and fly. Couple extras real quick. Guys, wish I did not have to go all the way to Baltimore, Maryland for Men's Room Red. Y'all need to find a distributor in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, love the show. I bet if you played Big Dummy on the Hill, some of them would still be trying to get a correct answer. Rock on. That from Ed. And one more on Big Families. Hey, guys. My husband and I have seven kids, and we are normal, whatever that means. We'll be married 20 years, and the kids are 19, 16, 12, 10, 7, 4, and 2. My husband has a dream job with a big company. We live in a typical house near the edge of uh, the county. Kids go to school, and yes, we do have a TV. It's possible to have a big family and not be criminals or cult members. I don't believe you. Long-time listener, first-time emailer, that from the lovely Holly. I'm yeah, say, likely I, story, Holly. We started that, I said, the over-under is eight. They're fine. Yeah, good call. Good call. <laughs> I went four. You I did went go five, four. I, I did go four. You did. I think I went five, so yeah, sorry about that, Holly. <laughs> All right, still to come, the word has 50 slang, but first... Now, the men's room wants to know... Who sucks less? Yay! Time once again for Who Sucks Less. That time where Stephen Throwhill brings us three stories from the news. Yay! It is up to us to determine which of these three stories suck the least. Now, if you like the Men's Room on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live, the debate is already underway in Who Sucks Less. And as we know, these are sensitive times. So today we went with the racial edition, if you will. Uh, we start in Kentucky. We're an assistant police chief. Well, he told a recruit that if he catches juveniles smoking marijuana to shoot them if they're black. And that's where things went really, really south for him. And we also go to Georgia State University, where a soccer player there, she was suspended from the team for using a racial epithet on her social media. And then we go to Alabama, where a teacher was placed on paid leave after walking into her class and telling her students to, quote, turn the in-bomb tunes off. That's how she was. She walked in. I know. Ha. I know. Don't walked in. Ha. Ha. But let's start in Kentucky. All right. We go to Kentucky. The <laughs> former assistant police chief, uh, as we said, basically told a recruit, if you catch juveniles smoking marijuana, he should, quote, 
shoot them. His name is Todd Shaw. He resigned from the Louisville Department just last year. He sent what they say several highly disturbing, racist, threatening Facebook messages to the recruit. Uh, basically, he'd only started there a few years ago, but he's been a cop for over 20 years. But the recruit asked them other questions like, well, you know, what's the right thing to do? He said, if they're black, shoot them. That's the effing right thing to do. Uh, as what to tell parents of juveniles, this guy said, call the parents. If mom is hot, effer. If dad, uh, if dad's hot, handcuff him and make him suck your D. This is the guy's quotes to a police recruit. These are his quotes, not mine. He continued, unless daddy is black, then shoot him. Anyway, he ended up losing his job, so that's that's his story. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. He didn't just stop. Uh, now let's go to Georgia State, where Georgia State University soccer player was suspended from the team after using a racial epithet on her social media. She's now withdrawn from the school. Now, some students, they had called for the expulsion of the 18-year-old freshman after the words appeared on her Finsta page, a secret version of Instagram that's growing in popularity. Now, the associate athletic director there, he told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that officials were made aware of her comments uh, just last week, just days after the university expelled a 19-year-old student who posted a video of her racist ranting on the same Finsta page. That student uploaded basically, well, I wouldn't even go through her stuff, but essentially this girl that was playing soccer is now withdrawn from school, booted off the team because she had some fairly um, insensitive comments to make on Facebook. Now let's go to Alabama, where an Alabama high school teacher, she was placed on paid leave for using a racial slur to complain about the music that her students were playing in class last week. Now keep in mind, students are allowed to listen to music and teach her Teddy Butchner's food and nutrition class, but they say she complained about a song that they'd chosen last week while working on a project. They were listening to Dear Mama by Tupac when the teacher returned to class. Now according to multiple witnesses, she told them to, quote, turn the in-bomb tunes off. The students and her parents obviously complained to the school administration. She admitted to using the slur, and right now she's on paid administrative leave. Okay. As far as the men's room Facebook page is concerned, uh, Caitlin says, hmm, uh, the athlete at Georgia State sucks the least. Uh, Jeff agrees, Georgia athlete, hands down. Uh, Jessica says, I'd say the soccer player, Alabama teacher, is no surprise, but to say that in front of her students definitely worse than posting it on social media. And Bradley uh, says, definitely the soccer player, that police chief should be taken behind the barn and shot. I think we can all agree that the police chief sucks the most. I disagree. Okay. I think the teacher sucks the most just because of the song. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's Dear Mama by Tupac. Right, right, right. I'll like, that's it. not even like a gangster song. It's like a nice note to his mom. Right. They, Sorry. They've appointed I that out. Yeah. Apparently not. She ran in there. The cops telling a recruit to shoot black people smoking weed. I mean, like, well, that's he's bad. the worst. But I just, I don't know. Can't get I just can't get over that she went in there. That of all the, the songs from Tupac, of, that's the one, right? Right. I mean, it was like, hit him up or... <sighs> It doesn't. Nothing excuses it. I just right, get uh, past uh, uh, that she was pissed uh, about that. Fair, but I, I mean, think in the end, sadly, I think the soccer player sucks the least because that's just kind of par for the course. Yeah, to me, I mean, they I don't all want to say are. that, but well, you don't want to say it, but it's true. I mean, I think yeah. all three are kind of par for the course. I don't think there's a lot of question about the black community and cops, right? So that's yeah. nothing new. An Alabama teacher, it does not shock me. That's what she says. It certainly doesn't shock me that that an athlete at a college in Georgia might have something to say. If you like the Men's Room on Facebook or follow the Men's Room on Twitter at Men's Room Live, the debate continues on Who Sucks Less. All right, still to come on Drink and Toast. The shot of the day is coming up and the word goes 50 slang. That is coming up next. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitchola. You have entered the Men's Room. Coming up, we'll drink and toast. The shot of the day is minutes away. Bullet first. Today on the word, we go back to the 50s and some lost 1950s slang. A lot of it, in fact, is not lost, but uh, some stuff that we still use to this very day. I will give you the term. You tell me what you believe the term means if we were in the 1950s. The term is, we're going to go this weekend and bake some biscuits. I'm in a band, you see. We're going to go bake some make biscuits. Make money. You're going to go make records. Okay, all right. If you're baking sense. biscuits, yeah. you're making it. What's an ankle biter? A kid. That would be a kid. Oh. What is bread? Money. Money. Uh, to burn rubber. Uh, peel out of there quickly. Exactly. What is a candy ass? Uh, uh, I almost a said a candy ass. A candy? Sugar-coated mm -hmm. candy ass. A lot of these we know. Uh, okay. Cloud nine is to be happy. Sure. Cooking with gas. Finally doing it the best way. 
Uh, cowabunga. Like, came from the yeah. 1950s. That's exactly what it means. It means hell yeah. Really? I'd never heard it before Bart Simpson. What if I said, oh, man, this is good. This is chili. It's awesome. It's it's a really good deal. Okay. It's chili. Ah, oh, chili. Yes, exactly. 1950s slang. What are earth pads? Earth pads. Earth, uh, earth pads. Shoes. Shoes, correct. Uh, here's one that came out in the 1950s. Hipster. Yeah, I know Hipster that. Hipster is. is for real. How about a hot mama? Good looking woman. Yeah. A knuckle sandwich. Punch, Punch in the, the mouth. Face. What if I said we are made in the shade? We got good to go. go. We're success guaranteed. Nobody what is a, coming out. What is a necker knob? Hickey. Girl? A necker knob is the knob on a steering wheel that allows one to steer with one hand, ah. eventually called a suicide knob. Okay. Huh. What if I said I'm on a trip for biscuits? Going to get money. I'm out of luck. Oh. I don't know why. You're out of luck? On a trip for biscuits. Damn. What is a poopa? A downer. Somebody who's no fun at all. Yeah. Oh, he's coming over, but he's a real pooper. <laughs> and what if I said, hey, man, you're razzing my berries. Stop busting my bees? Give Actually, me a hard time. You're exciting me. Oh. Believe oh, it or not. Yeah. Okay. And finally, what is a screamer? I wouldn't know, Miles. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Somebody loud in bed? In 1950s, a screamer is a hot rod. It is ah, a car. Okay. Very good. There we go on some 1950s slang. All right, Robin, if we made it to drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve at Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Today we toast 46-year-old Khalid Shabani of Madison, Wisconsin. Doesn't his name sound like a cologne? Shabani. Mm-hmm. Shabani by Calvin Klein. All you need to know about Khalid Shabani, he is a hairstylist in lovely Madison, Wisconsin, all right? And uh, Ted, your sister's a hairstylist, right? She is. So I would imagine... You know, when someone's styling your hair, man, it's really important that you listen to what they say. Like, try to keep yourself still, right? Because they're cutting Yeah, your you got to. Well, that's what you would think. Well, it seems that during the haircut, this guy Khalid got upset at his client because the guy wouldn't stop fidgeting and moving around. So he actually twisted the guy's ear. Like, finally, just grabbed the guy's ear, twisted his ear, like, hey, man, you got to stop moving around. But then things got worse. Khalid then nicked the guy's ear with his scissors on purpose, mind you. Okay, nicked the guy's ear to the scissors. Then, for his finishing salvo, he took his clipper and ran it down the middle of the guy's head. So basically, the guy was left with the reverse mohawk, or the hair that kind of looked like Larry from the Three Stooges. Oh so this God. dude took the clippers and just zapped his ass down the center of his head from front to back. Naturally, the guy called the cops. And here's the thing. It's not illegal to give a bad haircut, but nicking the guy's uh, ear with the scissors was. So Khalid got a ticket for disorderly conduct. <laughs> uh, we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! All right, let's get a contestant on the line for our profile. This will take color 9, 844-999-OLA. Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.